Excitement, high offensive production, and a lot of noise brings us into week zero of our game of the week here at River City Sports. Saudi Daisy beats Hickson 49 to 36. This is Jake Chapman with River City Sports, and with me as always, John Neal. A lot of a higher scoring game than we thought, 49 to 36. That's over almost 100 points, of, that's over 80 points of offense. Do you think it was that great of offense from both sides of the ball, or do you think the defense took a little bit of a lackadaisical effort into tonight? Well, Jake, I think it might have been a lackadaisical production from the defense. There were tons of missed tackles, both on Saudi and Hickson's sidelines. Um, numerous times, receivers and quarterbacks, particularly Preston Wilkie from Hickson, getting on the edge for Saudi Daisy. For the Trojans next week, going to the next game, they're going to have to focus a little bit on the pursuit drill. We saw that from Hickson this week of practice, but at times it didn't really help much. The Saudi receivers were kind of having their will at some times. Hunter Maynard was playing pitch and catch out there with Trey Carter and Blake Smith. And man, did we have us a game here tonight in our week zero game of the week. A lot of offense, you know, Hickson looked great offensively rushing the ball at times, a lot more productive than they were last week against Walker Valley. So you have to give credit to Walker Valley last week, having a pretty good defense, but. Hickson just couldn't make the stops when they needed to and had some key turnovers, led to Saudi's points, and we're here to, we're here right now, and Saudi got the W. And Trey Carter, not only can he catch and run, but he can kick. He had a 51-yard punt and was kicking it off, and he had two touchbacks. Could this kid do everything, and could he possibly be one of the best players in the district? I mean, I wouldn't – I'd far as go and say he is the best player in the district, Jake. When – Trey Carter wants to take over a ball game, Trey Carter can take over a ball game. It doesn't matter if it's kicking, tackling, receiving. He can even pass the ball if they need him to. He lines up sometimes and runs a little wildcat for him. Two, two years in a row now, he's had over 700 yards receiving, over 10 touchdowns both season. I mean, the guy's a complete package. It's just for him and for the Saudi Daisy Trojans, it's getting him going early. When they get him going early, there's a missed throw a little over his head or well into the first quarter. But once they connected, it was – you know, they Saudi Daisy pretty much turned the lights out on Hickson. It was the Trey Carter and Blake Smith and Hunter Maynard show from there. And Hunter Maynard, by the way, five touchdowns, over 300 yards passing. He he looked to me out here to be one of the best quarterbacks. And if by number wise, he probably had the best week out of all the quarterbacks in the area. Do you think Hunter? Do you think Maynard is going to be the key for this offense in the future in order in order for them to get back to the playoffs? Yeah, Jake. I mean, if you look at five, the District 5 AAA, you know, East Hamilton starting a new quarterback, Udawa starting a new quarterback, Rally starting a new quarterback, Walker Valley starting a new quarterback. That's the thing. Well, Maynard started last year, 17 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He's got experience. He In the spring, though, it didn't look like he might play. He's come off a hip injury, and he's even better. We saw him scramble for a play, and it didn't even look like it affected him. At times, I mean, they're going to need that – senior leadership, that experience at the quarterback position, if they want to make a run of the district title, if they want to comp be, compete against your Udawas and your East Hamiltons and some of your your Bradleys and your Walker Valleys. And I, I think they can do it with the offense they have. And I and you have to give it credit to Hickson's running game again because it's not that Saudi has that bad of a defense. I think they'll fix some issues in co next couple of weeks and they'll get rolling and they might be in the thick of the district race with that offense. And speaking of the Hickson running game, Hickson's quarterback, three rushing touchdowns. And Running the rear, putting up 36 points. I mean, it's impressive. Now, Hickson, yeah, they they fall first week against a solid Daisy team that was favored to beat them by more than 14. They were favored to get to honestly, they weren't even favored to play well this game. But they showed they shocked not only Saudi, but I think they shocked themselves a little bit. Do you think Hickson has a chance to move forward and get better from this kind of game? I mean, it is week zero, Jake. There's nothing to hold your head about for the Hickson Wildcat. Preston Wilkie had an awesome game. James Cole had some nice r r rushes at times. He added a score. I mean, Hickson, last year they lost this game. They went on to the quarterfinals. They won their own district. It's, it's still wide open. Right? They'll fix some things defensively. And with Preston Wilkie running the ball and they get that beer going, I mean, there you go again. There's another team that can keep progressing week after week and contend for district ch championship because district 6AA is wide open. We'll, we'll have some scores on our website up and on the Facebook page and our social media and we'll recap some of the other games and, but I still believe that that district's wide open as any. This is Jake Chapman with River City Sports. Saudi Daisy victorious 49-36. I'm here with uh, wideout Blake Smith for Saudi and you had two touchdowns tonight. What, what was the key 
for Saudi Daisy coming into the second half, just throwing the ball and everything? Well, we just had to keep our momentum going, and our line did a really good job of blocking, and Hunter made really good reads, and we caught the ball pretty good tonight, and uh, it came out with a victory. In the second half, defensively, you guys only allowed, I think, two touchdowns in the first half. They were seeing and having to control the game. What was the mindset of the defense in the second half? Oh, well, we just knew we had to make big stops, make big plays, and get our offense back on the field. And you had, like I said earlier, you had uh, two touchdowns tonight. It's pretty nice when you have uh, a Maynard throwing to you. Maynard had five. You think Maynard's a great leader for the team? Oh, yes, definitely. He's, he's a really good leader for us. This is John Neal at Saudi Daisy High School. We're reporting for River City Sports. I'm here with junior receiver Trey Carter. Man, you picked up where you left off last year, 700 yards receiving. 11 touchdowns, you know, you added two tonight, also had a 51-yard punt, had two touchbacks on kicking. You do it all. I mean, tell us how your, your progression went through this week and what you had to do today to really beat the defensive backfield for the Hicks and Wildcats. Well, I'm just trying to really improve myself, get ready for college. Um, I couldn't do it without Hunter, though. I kind of need a quarterback to throw me the ball. Uh, my dad pushes me, Coach Barnes pushes me. I mean, it's really just thanks to my coaches. And, I mean, at times it looked like y'all were just playing pitch and catch out there. I know both of you are baseball guys. Is that, is that something you feel your consistency is real on par now? Because he started last year. You also started the past two seasons. What could this offense do going forward from now from scoring 49 points? Uh, I think we can improve a lot. Uh, we just got to get our line and our running game, just get it going. After we get that going, I think we'll be really good. This is John Neal here reporting at, for River City Sports. It's, at Saudi Daisy High School. With me is the fresh above media direction player of the game, Hunter Maynard. Man, five touchdowns. You had two touchdowns last year in this game. You know, we tabbed, could you top that performance? I mean, five touchdowns, that, that could almost be a record for the school, wouldn't you think? But what did you do pre preparing this week? How do you feel the offense can go from here? Uh, you know, we, we worked hard all week. We worked hard all summer. That's where it starts, in the weight room, right up there in that weight room. and. Uh, I mean, I, can't, I couldn't do it without my offensive line. They, they had a heck of a game. Kyle Poffer, Zach Griffith, Grant Cordell, Hunter Hall, and uh, what we call Tugboat. His, name, his name's Vice, Owen Vice. But uh, Trey Carter and Blake Smith, they had a heck of a game. Levi made some good catches. I mean, I couldn't do it without my players. It's, it's all them. I mean, I'm just there. And, you know, going forward, what – what do you think this offense can do this season for you know for the Saudi Days and Trojans? You're going to have, face a couple of big time defenses in the district. Do you think that gives you an advantage of having some of those targets on the outside? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I feel like we can score with anybody. You know, we're not. We're, we think we can score against anybody. You know, we just got to come up with big plays on defense and got to get our second our, uh, special teams going. You know, to be and Hickson's a pretty big rivalry. You know, you this is the sixth win in a row for y'all. You know, tabbing 49, 20, 35 against Trojan. But next week. Fred Bank, whole different kind of rivalry. What do y'all got to do this week to get prepared? Uh, we just got to get prepared mentally. You know, it's it's going to be hot again. We can't be coming out here cramping up. Everybody's cramping up. We got to get in better shape. We got to work harder. The game I'm going to keep my eye on is Saudi Daisy and Red Bank. That'll be, you've got a juggernaut of a defense at Red Bank, and this offense can put up points at will, especially with Carter and Smith and Maynard and Christian Bell at running back. He had two rushing touchdowns tonight. What do you think is going to be more interesting, the more interesting of matchups? Do you think it will be Red Bank's offense against Saudi's defense or Red Bank's defense against Saudi's offense? Well, once again, you know, it will be Saudi Daisy's offense versus that Red Bank defense. Can Courtney Stamper neutralize the slot of Levi Thornton and some of the quick screens to Christian Bell out of the backfield? And can Malik Davis blanket a Trey Carter? I mean, that, that's what it will come down to. And if you switch it over, can Caleb Tate get it going for the Lions versus Saudi Daisy and get the Lions offense rolling? Because you know the Lions are going to have a great offensive line. We saw a great offensive line tonight for Saudi. It's going to be a great game next week down at Red Bank. So we're looking forward to that as well. And, John, now going into next week, what give us a preview of CCS and Lookout Valley. Well, I mean, Coach Spence opened up tonight for CCS and – outstanding fashion 62 nothing on the grace golden Eagles, and at the jamboree grace looked like they could play with some people so i'm real interested to see what coach spence has done to those chargers in there to get them them high flying you know striking all over the field um we'll preview that later in the week but also look out um valley um stumbling a little bit you know not getting off to a hot start versus silverdale silverdale picking up where they left off last week so it'll be interesting to see um evan walker for lookout valley and jalen Wynn for lookout valley against some of those guys they have at ccs and what coach spence can do once we catch up with him this week it's gonna be a good game 
And we'll be there next week for our game of the week. This is Jake Chapman and John Neal with River City Sports.